Welcome to Old Mexico. Old Mexico features great food, an adult beverage bar, and nightly specials in our family restaurant. Happy hour is from 4.30 until 7 p.m., six days a week. Our phone number is 334-687-7770. Old Mexico, located at 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Hours are 11 to 2 and 4.30 until 9, Monday through Wednesday. Open till 10 on Thursday through Saturday and 11 until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Old Mexico features the best authentic Mexican food with banquet and large party room that can be reserved. Old Mexico, unique to Eufaula, 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Old Mexico, celebrating 24 years of business by owner Santiago and Salome Solerio. Hey, we'll go ahead and open the meeting. It's about uh, 5.33 or so. Uh, we do have a quorum board members present. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, first item on the agenda is affirmation of a reappointed board member. Uh, where I can uh, see. Uh, Mr. Uh, Calton. It's required by the School Board Governance Improvement Act of 2012. And do um, you want to read the things that you refer to? It's the Certificate of Affirmation of School Board Member. Um, I affirm that each decision, action, and vote I take or make as a member of the school board shall be based solely on the needs and interests of students or, or the system, that I will take or make no decision, action, or vote to serve or promote my personal, political, or pecuniary pecuniary interest that each decision, action, and vote I take or make shall be based on the educational interest of the school system as a whole, that I will consider the views of all members of the board and the superintendent before making a decision or taking an action on any measure or proposal before the board, that except to the extent otherwise provided by law, I shall take formal action only upon the written recommendation of and in consultation with the superintendent, and that I may not individually or jointly attempt to direct or corrupt the operations of the school system in a manner inconsistent with the discharge of the statutory functions and responsibilities of the superintendent. Sounds like a lawyer wrote this. It does. <laughs> <laughs> that I shall actively promote public support for the school system in a sound statewide system of public education and shall endorse ideas initiatives and programs that are designed to improve the quality of public education for all students that I shall attend scheduled meetings and actively participate in school system functions activities and training programs that promote quality boardmanship unless good cause is shown and dated today's date June 7th 2016 to have you reaffirm thank you all reappointed uh, delegations um, we have one delegation tonight mr Cassidy. mr ron cassidy has um, asked to speak to the board <coughs> i'd like to start off by thanking you for giving me this opportunity to address you I have some concerns, and these concerns are based upon what I do for a living. And what I do is I have you follow TV. I have a simple proposal that I have never brought to the school board in the past. And I've got a reason for this. Normally, we start selling football for the fall, which is the biggest event we cover, and I'm not going to tell you some story that it's not. We start selling it in June. Well, you know what today is. And I've got a sales department and nothing's happening. 
So I'm here to make this following proposal. This is a simple proposal to broadcast Eufaula City Schools activities as I have since 1999 on radio and as of the second radio station at that time to broadcast those games and events live. It was always done uh, in the past by one station. We did two and it worked out fine for both of us. Neither one of us had a complaint. TV joined the broadcast mix with the construction of Tiger Stadium. It just so happened it was at the same time that TV came online. Eufaula TV wishes to cover academic and sporting events on a non-exclusive basis for the school year 2016-2017 on live TV audio, as we have for the last few years, internet radio, and delayed television broadcasts. Eufaula TV has done all of these type things, like I said, for about six years. Now, during that time that, that we've done it, there's been additional things to be considered, things that I have observed and things that have happened to this school system. And I want to make these clear. It is a, there is a current radio station here in Eufaula owned by Sound Ideas LLC, Mr. Stan Griffin in Columbia, South Carolina. With a one-year contract that was signed with, with them to broadcast Eufaula High School events, mainly football, that's all they ever did, they performed one game and never showed up again. They had a three-year contract, same owner, same station as here now. They never performed one event under that three-year contract. Never. I just have a problem with them being a big consider. I don't have a problem with the fact if you grant us both the right to do it. I'm not trying to block. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help the system. But I don't want to see us blocked because of that fact. As a solution to live broadcast problems in the Commons area, which came up during graduation on TV, I have talked with what was Bright House, which is now Comcast, and I have talked with their chief technician here locally, Tom, who had a, a son that graduated this year at the high school, and he has agreed that if I will buy the cable, the modulator, and the combiner unit, that he will see that it gets installed at the high school so that anytime there is an event at the high school, we can hook up to that thing and not have all the trouble that Mr. Hawkins and I had uh, here this year. I don't want to see this happen again. There will be no delay. It will be instantaneous. The audio will be there with the video and it's just as quick as getting from the head end to here, except it doesn't go to the head end. This connection goes to the monitors at the school, and it will be fed in at the common feed point anywhere that you have cable TV in the school, you can use it. You could use it for basketball games, you could use it for graduations, you can use it for music and the arts in the school, you start naming it you have the ability to use this. Now he has offered his assistance in putting all this in. I've offered to pay for it. I don't want the school district to pay a dime for it. And it's going to be a modulator, a combiner, and a bunch of cable to make it work. But I want to see that happen. I don't want a problem like we had this year at graduation. And this is how to solve it. We've worked on the live broadcast problems and we know some things that happened, and we know what caused them now. I wish I'd have known that night it was going to happen, but it didn't. So all of this is, I can provide you all the data to why I am here right now making this proposal and why this is the first time I'm here. I don't want to do that. I don't want to point fingers at anybody. I just want permission to broadcast Eufaula 
schools, not just the high school, AMS, the primary school, the elementary school, even the preschools. I want permission to let the people that can't be at these events at home that night to see them on TV. That's all I want. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We've got our minutes from 517-16 and 6116. I have a motion for approval. Someone. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Billy Lawrence Chevrolet is your home for great deals and real savings on both new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Right now, choose their great selection of GM-certified vehicles that come with a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And their service department has trained technicians that can service and repair your vehicle. Hurry into Billy Lawrence Chevrolet on Highway 431 South. Ladies, unlock the cash value in your jewelry box. Sell your gold on Dale Road. We buy gold jewelry, been or broken, at Eufaula Flea Market, 354 Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. bus route revision process. Yes, and I'm going to ask Mr. Warren and um, Mr. Beasley to come up and briefly share with us your process that, the, that Mr. Snowden from the State Department has walked you through and they've begun. <coughs> oh. Wait for my elderly colleague to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Warren and I, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get his glasses. Um, we uh, went to Montgomery, I think it was uh, May 19th, to meet with Kevin Snowden, who is the, the state transportation supervisor, and some of his staff. Uh, Mr. Warren had sent previously a bus report to bus data, a city map. There were some issues as they were trying to have the city map enlarged, but we were actually going to sit down up there and start plotting some things. Uh, the guy that was going to enlarge it wasn't there, and so we talked theory with them. Um, it was a good conversation. Uh, I learned a lot. I think Jesse learned a lot. When we both did. It was just things I hadn't thought about. But their suggestions were, were a couple of a couple of big suggestions. They had our our pick up and drop off data. The, the number of kids that get on and off at each stop, and and suggested that we look at rerouting based on the most concentrated stops and perhaps even dedicate one bus to, you know, th this area is probably the heaviest populated as far as pickup areas. One bus, come by pick up primary elementary school, go drop them off, same bus come back, middle school, high school, and then, then reverse that in the evening. And then kind of in concentric circles go out from, from that most concentrated area and, and route our buses that way. They also suggested that we take hard looks at our, our longest route from north to south and from east to west and, uh, and do some things there. So we're in the process of, of working on that, hoping to have it redone by, June, by the end of this month. Um, there's some other things that you're going to hear about in a little bit, playing, playing there or rerouting. So um, that's what little bit I know about it. I think he explained it perfectly. No. Yeah, we want to look at um, possibly expanding um, maybe one route um, over here in this area where we have a large concentration of students and also that challenge for it. So by doing that, we feel like we get our students to school and from school in a time of that. It's just all about efficiency and, and really other than some tweaks, they haven't done a big change in routes in the Here's a chance to take a look and see how we do it in the most efficient way. So. 
and this will kind of play into when we, in, in a few minutes, we talk about bus purchase and what to do and why we're not sure yet um, because of this. So it's, um, it's in the process and our goal is to be done by the end of this month because we will need to communicate that effectively to the parents, um, have it posted, those types of things, but it's to make sure that we don't have you know, kids at school too early or you know a, a bus or two that's there not picking up till 4 30 4 45 that's why we gathered all that data and um mr War i would say mr warren in your department but that would consist of mr warren and one other at the bus depart at the um, bus shop um that they have worked hard to gather that data for us with the bus driver so we'll be ready when when school starts with and hopefully um, we'll have you on july the 19th you'll have an idea of what our new routes are and we're working on getting us the bus mechanics, so be patient with us. Yes. All right. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you. And um, also under the superintendent's report, our facilities and operations, Mr. Bailey, anything happening in your office this week? Always. <laughs> Multi-purpose facility. Um, we're roughly about 32, 33%. I'm waiting on the final. You know, they send me one about once a week, once every 10 days to let us know where we're at. Um, no major delays. We've had good luck with weather. As soon as they get more things done out there, the weather won't really be a factor besides just getting things in and out. Our multi-purpose facilities analysis, we're going to start that probably in the next couple of weeks. We're trying to finish up all of our career tech applications and contracts as long as our restroom contracts. And as soon as we finish those, we can dive into the um, analysis part. We're hoping to have pre-construction meetings, possibly Friday if we have to, for the restrooms and the career tech renovations so they can start going ahead and proceeding with those projects. Painting at the middle school, looks like we're going to be finished, you know, last week of June, first week of July with everything there to stay on track. We've started our summer floor cleaning. There at the elementary school now, we're doing kitchens also. They have one more kitchen to complete. Then we're going to move to the middle school and then rotate out there. They've started prepping and painting the hallways at the primary school also. So we just got a lot of stuff going on. Greenhouse bid on June the 9th. And everybody's got their, their drawings. Everybody's fine. Thing with the greenhouse, we thought we'd be able to um, just do it all ourselves. But building commission came back and said that we had to have full architect, had to have full mechanical, had to have full electrical, everything. So it basically ended up costing us about $7,000 more because we had to have plans and architects. And the tennis court, just to make sure it's going to start in the third week, is that slated to be done by the time school starts? Oh, yes, that's okay. a couple of weeks process. Okay. Thank you, sir. Under new business, uh, item 5A is the 2016 budget amendments. Ms. Right. Ellis? Any questions on the budget amendments? Okay. There are no questions. Um, the superintendent recommends that the board approve item six, uh, five A. A motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item five B is the 2016-17 salary schedule. Ms. Ellis, if you want to. So with the 2016-17 salary schedule, the biggest um, revision to this one over last year's was the 4% increase. 
Um, the salary schedule you have before you shows the 4% increase on all employees. Um, we updated some title positions, just some verbiage throughout the salary schedule, added a couple of athletic supplements and um, <coughs> other supplements. Uh, and for the CNP, summer worker, food service person, and the dinner program that we will implement and then added that virtual school re registrar that you guys had just approved last month. <coughs> and a little note for those positions that are grant funded, just so you could see the ones that are funded by other sources. Any questions? Um, just one. I noticed under the, uh, the supplements, um, didn't see any a supplement for a JV coach. For which sport? For the basketball. There's a. Was it? Yes, sir. there's a JV supplement and ninth grade supplement as well. It's assistant varsity slash JV and ninth grade basketball. Okay, say that one more time. It's a. Uh, it it's head coach, That's assistant uh, varsity slash JV, mm -hmm. and then ninth grade. So there are three total. Boys basketball supplements and three total girls basketball supplements. Okay, but I just it's not showing that though, is it? On page eleven, I see um, head boys basketball coach supplement, and then right under it, assistant boys basketball coach, and then ninth grade boys basketball. Yeah. That assistant goes to the JV coach. So the assistant goes with that. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Old Mexico. Old Mexico features great food, an adult beverage bar, and nightly specials in our family restaurant. Happy hour is from 4.30 until 7 p.m., six days a week. Our phone number is 334-687-7770. Old Mexico, located at 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Hours are 11 to 2 and 4.30 until 9, Monday through Wednesday. Open till 10 on Thursday through Saturday and 11 until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Old Mexico features the best authentic Mexican food with banquet and large party room that can be reserved. Old Mexico, unique to Eufaula, 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Old Mexico. Celebrating 24 years of business by owner Santiago and Salome Solario. So, and then where is So, when we said JB, what are we saying? Because that's a JB team, right? Yes, sir. So, I don't see JB here. Is it something slash JB? Assistant? Yeah, it's the assistant boys coach. Our JB coach gets this assistant varsity supplement. That right there. So it should be a so it should so this should actually read a, a system board. Yeah, if we want to okay. add JV, because it, it is a whole new team. I mean, it's it a is. Team. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And then the, the girl says, "Does it, the girl say JV?" It says the same as word yeah. in the same way. Okay. Because I knew it was a JV. All right. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna amend that to to say assistant slash JV. So does that? Just so I make so that, sure. Was that, yeah. Then that's going to be my next question was, mm -hmm. so that supplement is sufficient for both those teams? Mm -hmm. Every program I've ever been a part of it was. I actually mm -hmm. was at O'Block. I was the assistant varsity boys basketball coach slash JV head coach. Okay. Because they play on the same night, I would coach the JV team. Mm -hmm. you know, what was that, game one? The girls played game two. And then I assisted the varsity Boys coach for the varsity game, but I received one supplement for that. Okay. So we have three teams then, because we have a ninth grade also. Yes, Is that right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. Okay. Any more questions? Not the superintendent recommends that the board approve item six B to include the four percent raise um, that will begin July one. For all um, employees. I move, and that's item 5B, I believe. Yes, sir. Um, I move that we 
Um, and we amend 5B to include this JV designation and also to um, include the superintendent and the CSFO and the salary uh, increase with all employees. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? So moved. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion passes. Item 5C is the summer PD stipend explanation appro and approval, and it's a little. The reason you have a board agenda with no names is because with um, what we're trying to do, there are three uh, areas that we are paying stipends for because they're system-wide curriculum initiatives. So if we were to list them like you you see when you see the um, personnel, you, you will see that um, those people are receiving a one-time stipend that work that works for them for all of their services. But the way our summer stipends work. Once they go and sign in um, and complete it, we get the sign-in sheet. We will log it on the spreadsheet, and their first two days will be flex, and then after that, they will be stipend. So if you say, for example, um, I'll use Amy White because she'll be attending rigorous curriculum design, which is four days next week. So she'll mark, we'll, we'll chart her and do flex and flex and then stipend, stipend. Then she'll go to Amstai the last week of the month, and so when she does that, we will then log her for four days of stipend. But you also have things that happen. So we would list her for six days for $600, basically. But say she gets sick or something happens and she misses one of those days. So what we do is we, as we get those sign-in sheets, and this is the process I have personally used, so I know it works, I log by tab in Excel every person. So the first one would be Amy White. We would list what she attended. We would calculate her two flex days first, and then the other four would be stipend. So then for the next three months, what you'll see is at the end of June, you'll see a list of teachers that actually went and got, got those stipends, and you'll approve those if you approve this. And then July, you'll see the same list, you know, the list of teachers, and then at the end of August to catch anybody that we may, may have done something, because you see we have PD all summer. So we do that to stay accurate um, and also we do it um, to cover, I know Miss Ellis says every stipend has to be approved, which I <coughs> totally understand that, but this keeps us accurate with the stipend, so we'll actually put the names at the end of the month. That's why this long explanation is, it, it can get messy, but this process works very well. So, so we're asking the board to approve basically those three lump curriculum initiatives, which is AMSTI, Rigorous curriculum design and um, uh, yes, laying the foundation, our pre AP. And today I counted, and the list changes because of again, like we had a, a teacher that resigned this morning that was is an uh, English language arts teacher, and those were some of the teachers that were going to laying the foundation. So as of this morning when I counted, we had, for Amsti, we had around 23 teachers from the elementary school, around 30 teachers from the primary, and then we have our two sixth grade from the middle school. For laying the foundation, we had <coughs> approximately 15 from the middle and 11 from the high, and of course those teachers, will that's what they will use to teach their honors slash pre-AP. And then our rigorous curriculum design, we are um, looking at two to three per grade level or subject, depending. Some we have just one, we're, but um, we're looking at each grade level across the board. So that's why we're doing this, because again, we could turn in that sixth grade teacher's name tonight on the stipend list, but she resigned this morning, so. Any questions? Okay. Um, if not, the superintendent recommends that the board Id uh, approve item 5C. I have a motion. Come on. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 5D is just our second reading of the early graduation policy. Nothing has changed. There were no um, revisions suggested last month from the first read. Just asking for approval so that we can put it into action. 
The superintendent recommends that the board approve item 5D. Do we have a motion? So I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Right. 5E is our bus purchase option. We know we want to purchase, need to purchase a bus. Um, so what I asked Mr. Bailey to do was to give us two options here. Um, with pricing, we can use our fleet renewal funds for the purchase of the bus. If we have to add air conditioning, and correct me, Ms. Ellis, if I speak incorrectly, but if we're adding air conditioning to a bus that was on the previous bid list, like for the 72 passenger, we would pay out of um, our local funds. But we do agree that we need a bus with air. Um, from here on out, it would be nice to get those if possible, because we have teachers that went to Enterprise today on a bus with no air. Um, also, the stop arm camera, what that does is it records for us when somebody runs our stop sign. Um, we had several bus, uh, bus drivers this year. I talked with one in particular, but sometimes it's hard to catch the tag um, when that happens and you have multiple times. So this catches it for you. We turn it into the police and they can prosecute. Um, so you'll see the total cost for our normal 72 passenger bus at 84,000. The 54 passenger bus is the one that doesn't look so big and we could use as an activity bus. There were different, different regulations we had to have to be able to use fleet renewal. So it has to have that, at least the stop arm, has to be yellow, is that right? I wanted to paint it red with the big quilt work E on it. But um, so you'll see though the cost, there's not a whole lot of cost difference. So you're going to get the most bang for your buck for the 72 passenger bus. That leaves us still without an activity bus. We still don't know what our routes will look like. And so I think what we're asking is at this point that when we get all that condensed, um, maybe by June 28th, and if it does, we, we'll bring that back and um, have that information for you. But if not, that's July the 19th. So we we're asking for your approval to purchase a bus, either one of these, depending on routes and um, we wanted to have a discussion to see what your thoughts were, seeing these prices and kind of what we've talked about when you have all of our organizations that um, don't need a full large bus, um, you have to make sure we have enough spares because we have four that we need to have for football season. Y'all seem to be the largest traveling group. We have two for football slash cheerleader and two for band. So right now, Mr. Warren, the ones that are not up for sale, we have 10, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So that, no, we have 14, right? With four that- 10 could, routes and thank four you. spares. 10 routes and four spares. And those are the one, not counting the ones that are up for sale. So right now though, if nothing were to change, we have 11 routes, okay? so. That would leave us with 11 buses and three to spare, which would leave us in trouble on Fridays. Um, so unless a route goes down, unless we decrease a route, which it sounds like from your discussion, we probably will not, then we probably for next year, we'll need that 72 passenger bus. Ladies, unlock the cash value in your jewelry box. Sell your gold on Dale Road. We buy gold jewelry, been or broken, at Ufala Flea Market, 354 Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Billy Lawrence Chevrolet is your home for great deals and real savings on both new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Right now, choose their great selection of GM-certified vehicles that come with a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And their service department has trained technicians that can service and repair your vehicle. Hurry into Billy Lawrence Chevrolet on Highway 431 South. Can you go smaller than 54 passengers for the activity bus? Help me, <clears throat> Mr. Bailey. You can. Yes, sir. But then you run into issues of, you know, the user fee. You can go down to 25 passengers, oh, okay. but we have to pay for it with general funds. Mm -hmm. It's the cost. It's, it's really, I mean, a bus is a bus, it sounds like, and then the additions really 
handicap bus is a little bit smaller, but it costs more money because yeah. it's, it's, it's a handicap bus. Um, like what I always refer to them as church buses, you know, 25 passenger, they run around $50,000, but you have to pay for it out of general. You can't use our fleet renewal board. Mm -hmm. Because I see a need for an activity bus for our, mm -hmm. um, we were looking at travel expenses today um, for that we're trying to include for budgeting next year. And so when you look at all of our athletics and extracurricular from DECA to Coral to, um, we're trying to figure out how to budget for that and there's a need, you know, so then you, we do know though for these two options for fleet renewal funds, these are the only two options we have, but then I, we're still talking and looking at budget um, because I still think there's a need for that 25 passenger bus. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong because I've, I've asked for so much information from Mr. Bailey. Anybody can drive. Which which bus can anybody drive? Twenty five passenger and under. You're not required to have a seat. Not required. So, say Mr. Um, Blackburn, our choir teacher, wants to take thirteen of his choir students on that twenty five passenger bus. He could technically drive that. Is that correct? I could take us on a retreat in that bus. Um, so that's where we stand right now. Um, if we were to miss, we met today and looked at budgeting for the for the new budget and. Miss Ellis is going to work on that. So if she sees a gap of fixed fifty or so extra thousand dollars, <laughs> we will come back to it as for activity bus. You don't see gaps. <laughs> Twenty five passenger no, bus have to be. Uh, no, so that one doesn't have to be. Uh, so it can be red. And Dr. Davis, yes, sir. We did allow the teachers to, to ride the uh, special needs bus today, and it has air. <gasps> Yay! And we knew that too. Thank you. What about our ESI <coughs> folks? Because we're taking them. We've got lots of them. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to get on that. Uh oh. Okay. They'll only see 20. Okay. Thank you. you Thank, you. Thank you for it's taking care of them. we got to provide air. We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, our kids are going to get on the bus August 4th this year That's without not, air. That's not an option. As people are still coming back from the beach, our kids will be on that bus behind them, sitting in traffic. So, and two, it is an economical way as we continue, because with AMSTI and with laying the foundation, there's year two and there's year three. So you're looking at 25 to 30 teachers that will be going back and it's only to enterprise. So we can provide that for them with air, um, you know, if we have that. So from here on out, I've asked them to be at a bus with air as we add on. So my recommendation um, would be for the approval of one of these buses. Okay, we have a recommendation. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, item 5F, I'm going to ask Mr. Bailey if he'll come up and talk through these quotes with us um, when we look at our facilities and trying to, to upkeep some of our larger facilities. Um, as you know, past several years as we have tried to absorb cost and do everything else through attrition, we have lost a lot of 12-month custodians during that process. Um, an example would be one custodian at a high school pretty much did not do anything but grounds. You know, from the time he started to the time he got finished, it was time to start back again because the high school was 55, 55 total acres. Um, with everything we've done to reduce the cost and our two people, it is just hard right now for us to maintain, keep up all five campuses. Um, if we do add back 12-month custodians like we plan to, that will help to some degree because we'll have an extra person that can do trimming, other things, and then, you know, we can drop our trailer, drop our lawnmowers and go. So in the meantime, we have gotten pricing, you know, a couple of different options. The best option seems to be outsourcing the grounds that you follow high school. Um, they would do whichever option we decided, bi-monthly bi during the growing season, weekly during the growing season, um, trimming, edging during that process, trimming bushes, you know, putting down pine straw, you know, at that location. And you can see the price I asked three different companies to give us pricing, one of which said they just, it was just too big for them to handle in their rotation because they were only had one crew. Um, 
one option you see for the is thirteen thousand dollars for the weekly growing season, ninety two hundred dollars for the bi monthly, and then the third company was thirty eight thousand and twenty eight thousand dollars know, for the same services and a eighteen hundred dollar one time startup fee. We also ask for what the cost would be at each school if we did like twice a year you came and you trimmed the bushes, you put down pine straw. And to give us a jump start, how much would it be if you came to every school and edged all the campuses so when we hopefully can put on our 12 month custodians July 5th when they start, that will already be done and then you know, we, we can have a jump start on that. And that's some one thing we do not have to worry about. And Mr. Bailey, I did not clarify this when I was adding my numbers up today. Under additional schools, um, when you've got the, the trim the bushes twice a year in pine straw and then the one-time edging. So I added those three amounts up to be about $6,000. Is that per school or is that to, that's, that's, so that's for all schools yes, except you follow high school? Except you okay. High school. All right. On the first one, the mowing <coughs> weekly and bi-monthly um, cutting, is that just to cut the grass or is that to cut and trim and edge? That's edging? cut and trim and edge and that's okay. everything. Okay. And there will be some areas that, you know, if you, if you read the little summary in the key points, yeah. all the athletics we will have to keep up. There's not too many companies out there that really want to get into the football field. I mean, you know, just don't want to mess it up. And I know coaches don't want to you know, just, <laughs> you know, just on the football field. But baseball field, softball field, practice field, and the stadium, and the portion there at the end where the softball field ends up towards Tiger Drive, towards 431, we would be responsible for that, but we would, we would have the equipment out there anyway when we were doing the practice field and everything else. So we would, <coughs> you know, and we would coordinate it with you know whatever schedule we went with. The only thing that you really are going to run into is, you know, in the south, the whole campus out there is pretty much behind grass. So, I mean, when you cut it, you have to go two weeks but hair grass can be knee high depending on you know how much it rains. And that is the only drawback to a, a bi-monthly is that, is that it's not centipede grass and it's not you know zoysia or anything like that. It's straight up by hair grass. So which of these options are you recommending uh, that we take um, under five? I recommended to Dr. Davis that we you know give you the two options to see what y'all were comfortable with if y'all were comfortable with the bi-monthly or the once every week and it starts pretty much in April you know, in the, you know sometime in March and that depends on rain and how you know the weather and it generally goes through September but they do come back in these numbers 22 and 32 they do come back you know like one time in November one time in December January February because you know of leaves and just so that it doesn't get out of hand but they do come back once a month during those off seasons Oh, uh, just let me ask you, Dan, though, are you concerned that the big difference in the bids? That's a big difference. That's a huge difference. I, I'm not that concerned after talking to them. I think I can understand why one was high and one was low. I remember about six or seven years ago, <coughs> we got a price on, on doing this, and, you know, it was about, you know, between... I can't remember, 77 something or 80 something is sticking in my head is what they wanted to do everything, but the high school is so big. Welcome to Old Mexico. Old Mexico features great food, an adult beverage bar, and nightly specials in our family restaurant. Happy hour is from 4.30 until 7 p.m., six days a week. Our phone number is 334-687-687. 7770 Old Mexico, located at 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Hours are 11 to 2 and 430 until 9, Monday through Wednesday. Open till 10 on Thursday through Saturday and 11 until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Old Mexico features the best authentic Mexican food with banquet and large party room that can be reserved. Old Mexico, unique to Eufaula. 1248 South Eufaula Avenue, Old Mexico, celebrating 24 years of business by owner Santiago and Salome Solerio. I mean, this one, uh, the first one sounds like, uh, you know, they're going to provide 
what we need for a much lower cost. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's, that's I mean that's exactly correct. Mm -hmm. So I don't see. That but, seems like a no-brainer to me. Well, what we wanted to do was to look at prices um, and also to look at look at the option because in our discussion um, we really feel like we, we will not be replacing anybody because that's not our role with this this is different than custodial because um, we feel like if we can get this done at the high school then that will give us the hands we need to take care of all of our other buildings during that heavy growing season with those 12 with one 12 month at each building the high school is just impossible to do I think unless we had our own crew um, I look at it compared to the elementary school that my, I just withdrew my daughter from same thing on a huge piece of land and it's impossible to do without all of that equipment and somebody there dedicated weekly during this time of the year to do it um, so that's why we talked about this at the high school and then the the bushes the trimming of the bushes and the pine straw that's something that I requested him look into because I think that would help at each of our schools um, on top of us taking care of just the general cutting but people that look at our schools again they can't get past sometimes what it looks like on the outside to go in so them manicuring it professionally with those types of things I think will help our buildings um, and the personnel that we're putting there uh, it was cut right before graduation and when I was there what last Friday I did my drive by of all my schools and again I've not lived in this area before but that was it looks like we had not cut it in over a month and I know I mean they had just cut it right before graduation but maybe it's a different area I'm, just, I'm learning that's but, just the behavior I mean, so mm -hmm. um, if we take care of you fall a high um, during the gray, gray and I had you check growing season so I make sure I understand that's March slash April is when we start getting into all the rain through September so that means those if we do weekly those 32 cuts will be weekly during the, the growing season and then once a month and um, if we do bi-monthly we're looking at you know every other week um, at, at 12 months so y'all know my recommendation is probably going to be the weekly um, we can start at the bi-monthly and then if it doesn't look as good then we can go to the weekly this time next year but I my recommendation is at that high school that there's just so much grass there so the weekly at the lowest bid. Um, I mean, I just can't see paying thirty-eight thousand dollars versus <laughs> right. no. So the week, weekly at the lowest bid, the first one. Now let get me a at the, at the yeah. lowest <laughs> price. Let me, <laughs> let me clarify. This hasn't been bid. This is an estimate. Is that correct? Yes, so we would bid this. Is that my understanding? Because it is a professional service. Is that? And below, okay, gotcha. So, okay. So we have. A, so yes, I would recommend um, that we go with um, the about, the weekly. How about the other two, the additional schools and the edging? I do recommend that. Okay. And once we get our custodians and see, um, you're, you're, when you look at all the upkeep that we're doing at the middle school with all the painting and then the primary school um, with the bathrooms and then eventually the elementary school but with that 12-month custodian to keep it clean like up to my expectations they should stay pretty busy um, so we can always go back and reevaluate but I really I would recommend it to start with which one you recommend the um, I'm sorry the 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 loan service that's for all three schools the additional schools the 2800 the 2400 and the 1000 for the three additional schools and then for you follow high school the weekly during the growing season at 13 4 and then the trimming of the bushes twice a year there we have a recommendation is there a motion so moved Second. all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed and thank you for that. And yes, 5G. The only thing that looks different, you'll have seen some of these, is maybe the dates may have changed um, with some of the activities. 
for some of our fundraisers and that's why it's coming back to you. Are there any questions on student activities? Not the superintendent recommends that the board approve item 6G. Is there a motion? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And item 5H, you have a, a list of, of personnel. Any questions or does anyone need any more time? Superintendent recommends that the um, board approve the following personnel under 5H. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Student hearing. Uh, but, Chair, before we leave, uh, I, I, I wanted to get some clarity on the uh, the uh, Hope Academy. Well, we've agreed to make that move. Now, just correct me here. We did say, is that a temporary? That is temporary. It is. It is. Okay. We, we've got to give the high school a place to put those people that we're taking their home away from them next year mm -hmm. with um, all of our CTE because we're totally renovating and so we are in the process and we'll bring to you in July a revamped program but for this year we're going to house them in just that wing and we'll bring that as part of July of what uh, Ms. Grant's working on but we want to house them in that elementary wing that's just elementary in that middle school wing that's four <coughs> rooms by itself with a separate pickup drop off to give the high school the year to get their renovations and then look at where we can use in the high school that like that ISS area something like that because ideally that's where we want those middle and high school kids but we got to get them out of where they are right now I and understand. so for one year yeah yes I just want to make sure yes, you're clear because I, I yes, guess I, didn't, I would have a major problem with housing them over there permanent yes sir yeah um, and it's again we're we're out of room for his I mean I think we're actually teaching one class in the multi-purpose room next year just to get through CTE renovations and Mr. Bailey's assured me that they'll be done after next year so that we can shift them to their to, to their permanent home yes sir December he says so before the end of the year all right. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, we have a student hearing. Uh, would the uh, hearing like to be, or the student have like the hearing to be conducted in open or closed session? Um, okay. Can I have a motion to that effect? So I move. Yeah, we move to close. Do we adjourn for 30 minutes? All right. Use ourselves for 30 minutes for the student hearing and closed session. All right. Your second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We uh, will return to uh, this room for adjournment after the hearing.
Billy Lawrence Chevrolet is your home for great deals and real savings on both new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Right now, choose their great selection of GM-certified vehicles that come with a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And their service department has trained technicians that can service and repair your vehicle. Hurry into Billy Lawrence Chevrolet on Highway 431 South. Ladies, unlock the cash value in your jewelry box. Sell your gold on Dale Road. We buy gold jewelry, been or broken, at Ufala Flea Market, 354 Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. <laughs> 